Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can make these series of rectangles uh, based on a center, which I can change the location, uh, based on radius. If I change this, this is going to be the radius we have here. There is also the number of uh, counts of this rectangles. Uh, we can get different outputs from this. For example, the top part of this rectangle, I'm going to explain. The inner side, maybe you want to use that as a facade. The down part of the rectangles. Or even this part of the facade. Or you can uh, extract more of that. Anyway, uh, another thing we can control is the height uh, minimum maximum as you can see here I can control the height minimum height maximum the length minimum and length maximum and create these rectangles and extract the outputs okay let's start uh, from scratch and learn this step by step okay to get started from scratch what I want to do here is to use a transform array and make a polar array component uh, let's go to display full name so we see the inputs and here what I want to make is a, a plane, an array, a polar array of plane. So I'm going to make an XZ plane. And right click and extract the origin. So this is the center and bring it a little bit forward. So as you can see here, uh, this is going to create a uh, polar array of uh, XZ plane around a center. Uh, obviously we can define the center with a point. And when you give it a point, this is going to be a XY plane, okay? So here we can have that here. If I change this, this is also going to create somehow a rotation. Uh, to make it easier, what I want to do is to define this one as the center. And uh, we can put this point as a movement in the X direction. So I'm going to go to transform, use move, and say, okay, move this point which is the center of our project, a little bit in the X direction, unit X, and give it a number. So that is going to be a movement, and then use this one as the center of the XZ plane. So that is like a radius. Uh, wherever you put this center, you can define this as the radius. So I'm going to name this radius. Okay, and let's bring this here and go forward. Now that we have them as a plane, I'm going to put them into a plane container and turn everything off. Okay, only thing we need to have here is the point, which is going to control the center. Uh, now that we have the plane, we can create a rectangle inside it. Uh, so surface primitive plane surface is going to create a plane inside a plane, obviously. So I'm going to put that here. Uh, when you give an, a number slider to X, uh, as you can see here, the X size and the Y size is a domain, okay? So it says a number to a number. Uh, what I want to do here is to give it a slider. So I'm going to put this slider here and another one here. And as you can see here, this is going to be from zero. If I zoom in, you can see that from zero to that number, right? That is really good because if this is the center of the plane, it's going to be from zero and then towards that number, uh, whatever it is, because we want to make from zero to that number. So that is uh, going to help us to control the X and the Y size, which is the height of these rectangles. And we can turn this off. Uh, another thing we need here is obviously an increasing height for these parts. Uh, we can use two methods. One is to go to the math, uh, sorry, in the sets sequence, we can use the series like this. And for example, I'm going to give that to the Y size. The start is going to be the starting section. So start height. We can control that. Then there is a step which is going to increase which with each of those uh, planes we have here. So let's put that to the step. And we can say step increasing height 
obviously we have to put this to small number. So I'm going to say maybe from 0 to 20. You can see that's going to increase that really fast. And then the count, uh, because we have 10, we have to define the count of polar arrays. So for example, 3 to maybe 20. Let's say count. Increase that to whatever you want. And obviously the same amount of 20 planes, we will have 20 of the series. Now you can see that this is going to create the final results. If you want to bring it uh, downwards, what you can do here is to make it even minus, for example, minus 20. Uh, put this starting height really high maybe and bring it backwards. I'm just going to change the direction. But to make it as simple as possible, we can just put this to zero. By zero, this is going to be the height, and this is going to be just increase it. If you want to reverse it, you can right click here and reverse it, and reverse the direction, okay? So we can create that with a series. Instead of a series, we can also use a set range. A good thing about range is that we can control that uh, the start, how much is the height of the start. So it's like first one. And what is the height at the end? So H2. And it's going to automatically create numbers between them. So we have to define a domain here. Math. Create domain. Construct domain. Uh, we can say start height is this number. And we can say that end height is this one. The steps you can create here, uh, because it's going to say, okay, this is the start and this is the end. And you say that I want, for example, two steps, right? It's going to create three numbers as an output. The reason here is that when you divide it into two parts, it's going to be the start, the middle, and the end. Or if you put it to three, obviously it's going to be somehow like this. Into three parts. And it's going to give you four numbers, right? So always the output is going to be one plus that number. So if I give this count to here, we have to go to the steps and say expression x minus one and give that to the y size. Now we can control the height of the minimum and maximum and create that as the results, okay? So remember that you can always use this uh, range or series for that. And if you want to, you can just connect that one to the y size. Just put that in the file that you will use in your project. Okay, now that we have the plane surface, you can also use this technique for the x size instead of having this, uh, length which is going to be used for all of those sections if i bake that you can see that in rhino also obviously these numbers has to be a smaller number so we can control that too and create this output another thing you can control if you want to i forgot that you can use this angle out uh, input which is by default 2 pi which is 360 degrees. If you want to, you can right click and use degrees. And for example, if I give for, uh, from 30 to 380 with two decimals, this is the angle it's going to create. So if I just increase that, you can see that's uh, being controllable from here and until reach reach the end, 380 degrees. Sorry, 360 degrees, obviously. And that is going to be the same as 2 pi. And now we can control that here. Okay. So this is a maximum degree. And I think that's going to give you the plates. Okay. Now let's work for the, the top part, the bottom, and the facade. So I'm going to go use the surface deconstruct BREP to deconstruct all of these plane surfaces into faces, edges, and vertices. And the best part is we can use the list item to pick up the edges. As you can see here, each of those rectangles will have uh, four edges, obviously. 
So for the list item, I can zoom in and say, give me the four edge output. This is the first, second, third, and last edge as an output. And if I go and put them into a container of a curve, you can see that. So that's the bottom. Uh, for the surface, we can use loft. And it's not going to give you an uh, output. The reason here is that it's going to pick up each of those bottom sections as uh, individual groups. If you don't want to see the zeros, just put this as to simplify. And it's going to go inside this first group and it wants to, uh, for example, this is like the first curve. It wants to loft it, but it's only one, so it can't. So what we have to do here is to flatten it. If we just flatten this input. It's going to put all of them in one group. So we have 20 lines in one group and it's going to give you the loft surface you want. Okay, you can use that as an output. And what we can do here is to just give this to all of the edges we have. So you can see that we can have each of them as a surface. If you want to select these, uh, I just wanted to give you a technique here. And that is a tool called Set List Weave. And when you zoom in, you can define different inputs. For example, I want to say, okay, these are the four outputs I have here. And I'm going to turn up everything. And the pattern is going to give you an output. So for example, by default, it's zero two, uh, sorry, it was zero one. So it's going to give you two outputs, the zero, which is the bottom and the one here. So you just have to give a slider to that. And what we can do here is to say from 0 to 3, obviously, that is going to be the bottom, picking outputs, okay? And if we want two of them, we can put to 0 and, for example, 2, the shift key. So it's the pattern is going to be 0, 2. Maybe you just want the bottom and the top. And you don't want the plane. Okay. So that's also possible. And we can get that as an output. For custom preview, I can just give the custom preview to the plane. I usually also use the surface B rep edges to see the B rep edges for better visualization. And we can do that also for the surface output. Okay, I think that this is going to be the end of this tutorial. So as you can see here, we can control the height. Uh, sorry, it was here. Minimum and maximum height. We can decrease that, maybe the direction like that. If you want to have the same length or same width, you can just give that one slider. That's like really easy. And uh, the count, the degree we can control. You can use that for a building, for example, and the radius. And that's that's it. That's how you can create these two surfaces also. If I bake that. and also bake the plane surfaces. And this is going to be the output we will get at the end of this tutorial, and we can use that in our project. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you have any question, ask below. See you next time, bye.